Hey everybody, Mike Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Um, amongst a lot of procrastinating and so forth, and uh, Gavin and I getting together and um, looking at the uh, branch line down here, I think I've finally come to a conclusion as how it's going to lay out. And I actually like it because it leaves room for other businesses in there that aren't necessarily rail served or even, I don't know, anything, anything per pertaining to the town. Um, so we're going to kind of see how that pans out. You'll see what it all looks like in this video, uh, 69. And uh, I hope you like the ideas and I hope you enjoy it. And be sure and look at the vintage page. I always say it nowadays. Um, anyway... Hope you enjoy it all, and let's get started. By the way, if I look a little bit scruffy, it's because we got up at 6 o'clock this morning, did a bunch of uh, work outside, trimming bushes in front of the house. I mowed the yard and everything, and by the time we got done at 9 o'clock, it was 90 degrees outside. But we thought, hey, we're all done, man. We got up early, we got all of our chores done, and we turned on the sprinkler system, not the sprinkler system, but the drip system in the front yard and found out we had a small leak. I went digging for that leak to find out that it was coming out of a flower bed. We had to dig in the bottom of the flower bed underneath some very thick bushes, and I found two or three leaks in the uh, plastic, the black plastic pipe in there. And after fixing one and still having leaks, I cut the whole thing off. We started all over, put a new piece of pipe in, put new drip pipe in, put new uh, bubblers in, and I think we may have it solved. But anyway, we didn't get done with that till like noon, and at 1 o'clock I had an NMRA meeting where I had to go down, and uh, we are, we're working on a T-Track group. We, some of us have had T-Track modules uh, for a while and we were going to go gung-ho on it and it kind of just fizzed out and we have a, a new guy uh, by the name of Drew and he's kind of he's kind of wanting to get motivated and and do the t-track stuff in fact we had to go down there and test all the t-track modules that we had we had about a maybe a 15 foot long loop and we got it all to run, make sure everything worked and everything. And he's taking all those modules to Clovis, New Mexico, uh, for a meet with those guys over there. And I wish I could go, but it's just a little far for me to want to go and stay in a motel and all that stuff. But nevertheless, I hope that it all works out for them. And I hope we kind of get going with the T-Track so we can set stuff up here nearby. So that being said, let's get on with it. Okay, guys, I was giving this here some thought. And I want to be able to put grain cars on a siding and not obstruct the uh, reverse line. So what I'm going to do is I have the track soldered right there. And what I'm going to do is solder this track that comes around into the crossover, into the crossing, get that stabilized, then I'm going to desolder that and I'm going to put this turnout right after the crossing like so and then it'll go down there and it'll connect back in at that other turnout down there. So I will be able to put a few grain cars in there and move them back and forth and still hold on to the integrity of the reverse loop and I'm taking this video I know there's other stuff I've done and I'm probably going to cover this again but this little piece of track is too short but there's going to be a track tying that together that will go over here and I'm yeah there's a lot going on here but I'm thinking about moving these two switches down putting this switch over here then tying it into that so that you could cross over from the track that's going to go around, because this is going to go up and serve industries, but so you could cross over, get to this end of this switch, go through the crossing, make a curve right here, and tie in over there. That is the 
game plan. I'm not sure how this right here is going to work out. I may have to back these up even more to get that switch in there where it'll, where it'll line up with that. But I'm going to attempt that right now, so um, you'll see how it turns out at some point. And by the way, this is still Thursday afternoon, and it is just super hot outside. So this is where I'll be for a while. Okay, everybody. As you can see, I don't have the track down there yet, but that's to come. Uh, Gavin and I decided to put a little station there. It would give a place for my doodle bug to go and pick up people going elsewhere on the layout. And I realize it's not prototypically way far away, but we're compressing everything here. So there's a station there that will serve this little community here. And the station over on the main line serves the community on the other side of the tracks over there. Okay, so enough of that. It comes down here. These three structures are where they are going to go. As I said, the road will go up, cut off and go behind that building. I'm pretty sure that building is going to go in there somewhere. And now let's cover the track work down here. Okay, you see that we had track coming in here before <clears throat> and creating the runaround. The runaround goes down here, around this corner, over to here, comes together, and back to run around. This switch right here will take things up into there. This switch here allows you to come through the runaround and throw this switch and go back up in there and service those industries back there, back there, without having to disturb the cars on the icing platform. Now, of course, you could use that track if there was no cars being iced at the time, so you have two ways to get there from here, okay? Uh, and as you can see, let me back up here. As you can see, we have a third track there. That track parallels these tracks, goes around this curve, goes through that crossing, goes up here, and ties into the reversing loop. Then I put two turnouts in here so that I had room to put maybe two or three grain hoppers at the uh, grain elevator. So you can see that this crossing, and I've never used a crossing before. That's a code 80, by the way, because it, they had a insel frog. Uh, but anyway, you can see how that crossing allows you to cross there and go up there and allows this track right here to cross and go to the reversing loop. And of course, the switch way over there takes you back into the scrapyard. Now, Gavin and I were also told, well, let me go continue with tracks. This switch allows you to go up here and down that lead and that lead, which would be the remnants of an old yard that was a portion of these tracks here that is now gone. This track that goes back here can be for locomotives or cabooses or storage or whatever I want it to be. And there will be some kind of, I don't know, Santa Fe buildings in there, a place for the Santa Fe vehicles to park. Um, I mean, the ACT people, I'm sorry, the ACT people, ACT people to park. That's a tongue twister. Anyway, so I hope you can see now how this is coming together and we're good up to about this point. Then we will continue on. Um, I do have some insulated joiners in here where I need them. There are places where I do not, where I will have to cut gaps in the track. That's okay with me. I can handle that. Super glue a little piece of styrene in there. But now you see how it flows. The trains come in here. They probably will not be going directly to the icing dock. 
that turnout way over there is to get out of the icing dock. So the trains will come in on the track closest to us and they will come into the branch line. And if they need to run around, they can run or drop some cars. They can go around this curve, run around, come around the other side, pick up some cars and push them into industries that will likely be over here. But when they first come in, the cars will be on the correct end of the train to go beyond here, back up through those switches, go around that curve, which is 12 inch, by the way, um, and go back and serve all of these industries at once. So there you go. Somebody asked about how was I going to avoid traffic on the uh, without moving cars on the uh, icing platform. That's how it will be done. So everything is just tacked in place, and uh, I have it tacked in place with the um, foam nails uh, from Woodland Scenics for right now until I get a chance to ballast track down. Still haven't quite decided what I'm going to do over here. I may just fill that in and put some, uh, I'm not sure, put a pond on the other side, leave that track up on the foam that it's on, and put a pipe coming out this side. I'm not really sure how I'm going to handle that. It doesn't matter. Take my word for it. It'll come together somehow. But let me uh, back up here, back way up. Get up on the stool. And give you an overshot. And you can put two and two together and figure out how that's all going to work. And there you have it so far. And we have plenty of room for more industries over to the right-hand side. Uh, we're also thinking about putting some buildings that are not, since there'll be a road uh, way over there down the back, and it'll go, it'll go in front of the, uh, the uh, scrap metal place and over to the uh, grain mill. Uh, we thought it might be a good idea to put some structures in there, restaurants and things or whatever, some rundown houses that would be by the scrapyard. I don't know. Other things besides um, rail-served businesses along there. And as you can see, we already have the biker bar down there near the end of the uh, the scrap yard. We were thinking about just to the left of that, putting in the trailer park. We thought that might be a good thing. And then put, it, put a bunch of overgrown trees in the trailer park. That's kind of how old trailer parks get. I don't know, but we have some room for other things besides just these buildings. So there's opportunity for other scenery work. Well, and there you have it for now. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to finish up this video. This is still Thursday night. We'll see how tomorrow goes and see how much uh, video I have. And maybe we'll, re maybe we'll release another one. I don't know. Okay, everybody. I do believe that we have a final layout. You can see that... Uh, if you come over here, you can see that the uh, branch line comes around here, comes around the corner, goes down here, goes into the lumber yard. The lumber yard has one track for loading, one track for incoming and outgoing. You come back, you go right on that switch, and you get to a switch that takes tank cars to one side of the chemical plant and takes boxcars cars to the other side of the chemical plant. Then, I'm not sure this is how all the buildings will lay out, but I like the ghost town there. It would seem that the chemical plant has put an end to people living over there. And then we're going to put the old mine camp buildings and stuff probably up on that hillside back there that originally led to the ghost town down below. At least that's my thinking. Um, I don't know where I left off the last video, but uh, if you come back here, you can see that we have a track that goes back in here into two sections and feeds Schmelly Meats and um, the liquor distributor and Sierra Madre Packing and Robin's Feed. Um, 
I think that that works out well. And then over here we have the grain silo and we have the junkyard. Now we're thinking about the trailer park over there. Not sure if the bar is going to go there or over here on the other side. But there will be a seedy section of Old Town down in here. Okay. Uh, that's kind of the game plan. And there will be roads that will lead from like the liquor distributor back into town and so forth. But I will start, if I can turn around on this little bitty stool without killing myself. Let's do this. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, that's the latest. That's number 69. I hope you kind of liked it. I, I'm liking where uh, kind of all the... Well, I'm liking where all the industries are now located, but it's not to say that I might change some out or might not build some new buildings and stuff. Uh, I'm, <clears throat> I believe I might have said that I'm working on the uh, GC Laser stock auction house to go down here and on this end and it's one hell of a kit uh it there's just a ton of tiny parts wooden parts laser cut parts i'm plugging away at it but i don't know how long it'll be before i get it as rat rob bob says we're getting it we just ain't got it yet and i hate to steal that from him but he'll understand uh, anyway, take a look at the vintage page. Hope you enjoyed it. And as usual, thanks for watching.